morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Chola Mandalam Investment and Finance Company Limited Q2 FY23 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Kotak Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nishchint Chavate from Kotak Securities. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Nishchint. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the earnings conference call of Cholamandalam Investment and Finance Company Limited to discuss the 2Q FY23 performance of Chola and share industry and business updates. We have the senior management represented by uh, Mr. Velayan Subaya, Chairman and Non-Executive Director, Mr. Ravindra Kundu, Executive Director, and Mr. Arul Selvan, President and CFO. I would now like to hand over the call to Velayan for his opening comments after which uh, we can take uh, the Q&As. Thank you, Nishchint, and good morning, everybody. The uh, Just a quick update on the quarter, and uh, then we'll get into um, you know, individual businesses. Um, disbursements for the quarter was at 14,600 crores, which was up by 68%. Um, and for the half year, we've been at 27,900 crores, which is up by 126%. Uh, total AUM is at now at 91,841 crores, which is up by 22%. And uh, our net income margin is at 1697 crores for the quarter, which is up 21% year-on-year, year, and uh, 3,337 crores for the half-year, which is up 20% Y-on-Y. And y. The PAT uh, is at 563 crores for the quarter, which is down by 7%. We'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, and 1,129 crores for the half year, which is up by 21%. Uh, broadly, the macro environment, you know, continues to uh, look at, you know, interest rate hikes in response to high inflation. So, uh, you know, there's all of this question around the global recession coming up, but, you know, in general, India seems to be in a good place uh, relatively. Uh, you know, obviously, we're just kind of a bit dependent on trying to see what happens with global factors, but otherwise... When we look at Chola's performance, we've achieved our highest uh, quarterly dispersals, which has really become possible because of our diversified product mix, right? So basically, a lot of the new businesses we talked about, the growth in, uh, you know, in housing loans, loan and property, all of that is basically helping this. And uh, this will really help us help sustain the momentum moving into the festival season ahead. Uh, just a quick commentary on the profit number. Like we said, we were down by 7%. Uh, but basically, there is, uh, you know, it's 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 driven by what happened last year in Q2. Last year in Q1, uh, we had we were impacted by the COVID second wave, and therefore we had huge forward flows into higher buckets and higher provisioning. And then post release of lockdowns in Q2, we were basically able to roll back a lot. Um, and uh, so we had a we had you know uh, so basically they moved into higher buckets in Q1. They, they moved into higher buckets in Q1, and and therefore you know Q1 of FY22 had higher credit loss provisioning at over three percent, an NCL of 563 crores, and Q2 resulted in just 0.37 percent, an NCL of 69 crores, which is what basically caused our profit in Q2. To be, uh, you know, I, I would say a bit abnormal, abnormally high, uh, which is why if you look at the PAT for the first half of the year, uh, we're at 1129 crores, which is basically uh, up by 20, 21% year on year. Uh, the, uh, I'll just give you some details in individual businesses. We said aggregate disbursements grew by 68%. Uh, vehicle finance uh, disbursements were at 8,502 crores for the quarter, uh, which was a growth of 38%. Loan against property dispersed 2,246, which was a growth of 38% again. Uh, home loans uh, basically dispersed 743 crores, which is a growth of 23%. Uh, SME business dispersed 1,473 crores. 
which is a growth of 367%. Um, and this is uh, a, a consumer and small enterprise loan business dispersed 1,579 crores uh, uh, for, for the quarter. Uh, secured business and personal loans was at 81 crores. And that's what resulted in then helping build the book to 91,000 crores, 91,841. PBT ROA was at 3.4% 3 for the quarter and 3.5% for the half year. And ROE was at 18.3%. We continue to hold strong liquidity, 4,841 crores of a cash balance, um, and a total liquidity position of 6,573 crores. And ALM is comfortable with no negative cumulative mismatches across all time buckets. Um, so uh, with that, let let me. Uh, I mean, we've talked about asset quality also, so I'll just kind of uh, briefly allude to that. Um, the uh, at the end of September 2022, um, our uh, stage three assets stood at 3.84 percent. Uh, versus 4.16% at the end of June to 2022. So we've come down um, by, uh, you know, about 0.32%. And uh, our provision coverage went up to 41.48 versus 40.69. The total provisions currently carried against the overall book is at 2.73%, as against the normal provision levels uh, of 1.75% that were carried prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. And as per revised RBI norms, GNPA and NNPA, as of September 2022, uh, stood at 5.84 and 3.99% respectively. And uh, so we carry 771 crores higher pro provisions under INDAS over IRAC. And um, as per prevailing IRAC norms, the GNPA will be similar to the statutory numbers we just gave you. And capital adequacy was at 18.4% as against the regulatory requirement of 15%. Tier 1 capital is at 15.77%. So uh, let me stop with that and be happy to take it over. All of us are here and we're happy to take it, take it over for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star N1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to answer questions from all participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The first question is from the line of Rajesh from Alpha Accurate Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Uh, you know, the, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I have just two questions. The first is, you know, if you can give color on the yield on loans, which is declined about 75 bips YOY, and of course the cost of fund is up 13 bips, so this leads to 88 bips, uh, you know, lower spread. Uh, can you give your near term, how do you see that? And next year, how do you see the same? That's first question. And second question is with reference to the operating expenses, which is up about 28% YOY. How do you see, you know, this number and the cost to AUM ratio in the near term and in the FI24? Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, Arul here. Yeah. Um, so the yield has uh, moved from 13.7 to 13.5 as compared to last year. This is primarily because uh, we are again comparing the previous year. Actually, the yield in the Q3, Q4 had dropped further because of the prevailing uh, you know, benign interest rate scenario at that point in time. And from there, it has actually moved up uh, if you compare the Q3, Q4 numbers which is what we are now doing at Q1, Q2. Uh, the cost of funds as gain on a on year-on-year basis is, uh, is still lower than last year. Uh, that's what you are seeing here from 6% to it's still at 5.8%. While Q1 versus Q2, it has moved up. Uh, the expectation on cost of funds increase over the full year would be around 50-60 basis points on an year-on-year -year comparison. Is what I have 
was read in the last call also, and we still hold to that. While we would be improving the yield by way of uh, increasing the yield on the floating rate books, which is our LAP and HL book, uh, on the entire book, and uh, for the vehicle finance book, uh, in the fixed rate book, we would be increasing it on the marginal uh, yield on the on such disbursement. You will see yield improvements happening progressively as we move into the subsequent quarters. Regarding your OPEX question, uh, I think we still hold that we would be in the 3% to average as a ratio. We, we will endeavor to keep it at that or slightly below that level. So, you know, basically, uh, when I look at FI24, uh, the net yield, you know, how do you see the yield, uh, you know, as we move forward, particularly in FI24? And same question for, you know, whether one should look at operating expense in absolute terms uh, in FI24, should we expect about, you know, 10, 12 percent kind of a growth? Or you think uh, because of the lot of new business development, it can be uh, higher? So the yield will be a factor of uh, the product mix. Uh, as you know, you know, the, the strength of Chola is we have a wide product mix even within each of the product categories we handle, which is Vegas and the lab or a, no other product. So that would dramatically be driven by which products we focus on depending on the demand in the geographies we operate in. So it is very difficult to say that, you know, will it be exactly what would be the FI24 number right now on yield, NIM, etc. The way we operate is to make, have that product mix done in such a way that the rota of 3.5% free tax is delivered irrespective of wherever we are on the yield line or the cost of fund line or on the OPEX line. While we have, when we do a higher yield product, the OPEX will be larger because these will be of small ticket like say for example two-wheeler loan or our, you know, the new businesses which is like Mercedes, etc. But then the yield compensates for the higher OPEX. So individual line items will keep varying based on product mix. So I, I would rather request that the focus be on the rota, which would be what we will continue to deliver in the 3.5% uh, levels, pre-tax. Just to give you the yield trajectory for last uh, few quarter, Q2 last year we were actually for the marginal book, we achieved 13.77 and then Q4 it went down to 13.38 for the entire CFCL book. And now in Q1, it has gone up to 13.73. In Q2, it has gone up to 14.25. So from the lowest uh, bottom of 13.38, our marginal book yield in the Q2 has gone up almost uh, closer to 80 basis point. In addition to that, we have also done a rate revision for our home loan and loan against property, and that is going on. So that is also impacting improvement in the book yield. In the current year, if you see that from the Q2 last year in the vehicle finance, the new vehicle sales have picked up. And that is also a reason for, uh, you know, we have to participate in the market. And uh, till Q1 or last year Q2, the used component was high. Marginal book yield was higher. In spite of that, we have been successful in, you know, increasing the rates of the marginal book. And my question on operating expense, on the absolute basis, how should one look at it for FI24? No, I, I see we cannot tell on the absolute basis. We are giving you on the uh, average asset basis. I told that it will be at less than 3% or 3 to 3% level. So we, we stick to that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Rikin Shah from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just had one question. Uh, so the disbursements for the new businesses has moved to the quarterly run rate of 3,000 crores, um, you know, uh, probably even ahead of uh, what was uh, kind of guided earlier. So as these new products keep getting rolled out uh, to the existing branches, uh, would you be comfortable sharing your growth guidance or uh, what proportion of this new businesses will constitute the total book at around 5% in medium term? We have reached to 5% now. So, yes. Uh, see, uh, that is on the EUM uh, level. 5% is the 
uh, you know, total size of this new vehicle, new businesses, three businesses, which is CACL, SME, and SPPS. Uh, and obviously, it will go up. Just to give you the direction of uh, vehicle finance, how it is happening in terms of disbursement, uh, for a uh, few quarters, last uh, four, five quarters, vehicle finance in Q1, the disbursement was, uh, the mix of the disbursement was 78%. In Q2, it came down to, you know, 71 and Q4, 69, and Q1, it is 64, and Q2, it is 58. So obviously, the disposition makes up the vehicle finance is coming down in spite of vehicle finance is also growing at the rate of, say, 38% in quarter two, and the overall growth has been 89% for the half year. So the, all the divisions are trying to basically grow their disbursement depend upon the market condition and our portfolio behavior. But obviously, the new businesses will take little more share as they go ahead and expand their uh, you know, operation because they are also finding out you know, success in their uh, last one year operation. So obviously, they are confident and you know, quite committed to go the rest of the branches as well. Sure. Any number that you would probably uh, point to in terms of where five percent of AUM could settle in the next two years? As of now, we are not giving any number. I mean, we have to just wait another one year to so start giving the numbers because these are basically a very fluid in terms of the disbursement. So obviously, the directionally, the new business mix is going up. Understood. Okay, thank you. That's all from my end. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Dhaval from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just had uh, one question uh, relating to the new business. Uh, so could you uh, split the disbursement uh, between uh, CACL, SBPL, and uh, SME, and uh, also give some perspective around uh, what percentage of the uh, CACL book uh, is uh, via partnership channel? And um, just one more follow-up on that is, uh, how do you see the rundown of the new businesses? Uh, since right now we are in the build-up phase, uh, the runoff rate seems to be uh, uh, relatively low. Uh, if you could give your expectation, that would be useful. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, you see that uh, in Q2, uh, the quarter we ended now, uh, we have done the disbursement in terms of SME is 1,473 crore, and 81 crore came from secured business and personal loan. And CPL had a two uh, channel. One is a traditional channel where we pay done 1,108 crore, and partnership channel gave 471 crore. This partnership channel 471 crore is has got higher run down. Rest of the uh, you know, volumes are in normal right now. Uh, understood. And uh, sir, directionally, how do you see the uh, runoff rate on the new business uh, portfolio? Uh, uh, should it be around the current level, or you would expect this to move uh, much higher, uh, especially in the consumer and SME? Uh, no, no, it will be in the same level because our partnership book, which is the small ticket size, uh, short term uh, uh, PM, is actually smaller. Well, actually, uh, one third of the overall book. So, therefore, that is not going to change anything. And also, we are growing in the home loan and affordable housing, uh, or affordable home loan and also loan against property, which is a longer book, uh, longer term. The MSME has got some amount of bill discounting, which will be again one third of that, which will again run down faster. The rest of the books will perform normal in 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 line with the similar run downs like vehicle finance. Uh, understood. And just uh, just one more uh, uh, broader level question in terms of growth. Uh, do you see uh, you know this momentum that we see in uh, second quarter uh, sort of continuing for uh, you know not just FI23 but into FI24 as well? Uh, uh, given the contribution of new business will will materially go up uh, from the current level. Uh, do you see 25 uh, percent kind of trajectory even in FI24 likely? All depend on macro, and uh, even uh, India is highly depending on monsoon. But the monsoon has been better, although it has been uneven. Uh, so second half is going to be better. So for the second half, we can actually expect a better disbursement than what uh, we have been discussing so far in terms of absolute value. So obviously, we will be growing, and as of now, our growth has been 20 to 2 percent, which can go up even 25 percent in this financial year. If next year things are remaining as it is, then we will continue this momentum. But uh, for the next year, we have to see the industry also having a 
you know, higher pay. So that's the reason we don't want to give any kind of, you know, uh, forward-looking statement for the next financial year. As of now, for the as we stand here, uh, it, this year is looking very uh, good. Sir, got it, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. We have the next question from the line of Darpin Shah from Haitong, India. Please go ahead. Yeah, th thanks for the opportunity. My first question is to Arul, sir. Uh, so the floating rate for the home loan and lab, uh, we have not seen any kind of repricing. Sorry to interrupt. I would request you to uh, speak a little bit farther from your mic because we can hear the disturbance along with your voice. Uh, is this better? Yes, please proceed. Yeah, sorry about it. Yeah. So, Arul sir, you know, uh, in terms of the floating rate book, uh, you know, that is home loans and uh, home equity, you know, we have not seen any kind of a yield uh, a revision in this quarter. Uh, how do you explain that? See, the, we have increased the floating rate on our lab book by 40 basis points in June and 40 basis points in September, and we will be doing another 40 basis points in November. So you would only see, you would have most probably seen only the first 40 basis points in impact in Q2, which you may not see, uh, you will only see as we move into Q3, the impact of the second 40, and then one in Q4, the third 40. So we have been doing this increase in a staggered manner so that we also wanted to assess the impact of is there available, will there be precursors and how the market and the industry is behaving. And uh, we are presently surprised that the foreclosures have not been uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, as we ex expected it to be. And the way the market has increased the rates like more than 100, 150 basis points in one shot, I think we have been more, uh, you know, kind to the customers, uh, if I may say so, uh, in, in taking it in a staggered manner. The uh, same applies for HL. We have done uh, those uh, changes. And so you'll see them progressively coming in. Okay. But, uh, you know, in the, the, the 40 basis point increase in June, uh, we are not seeing any impact in, on the overall yields uh, for second quarter as well because the reported numbers suggest that, you know, the yields are stable at 11.7 types for home equity. Yeah, that, see, that is also to some extent will be driven by the new disbursements that would have happened in the Q1 and Q4 of last year uh, and Q1 of this year. So where, as we were talking earlier, the same principle applies because in those periods the interest rate was benign and the cost of funds was benign. We had also scaled down our lending rate. So to that extent, it is it is offsetting the increase that you, you might be seeing here. Impact will start, uh, start will will up next quarter. quarter. Okay. And sir, in terms of provisioning, any additional uh, macro related provisions we have done this quarter? We have not increased the management overlay. We have held it there because actually we don't see, as you can see, our NPA numbers are coming down. The environment is uh, more stable from, uh, uh, from the uh, incremental or unexpected loss perspective. So we have not either increased it nor have we consumed it. We will evaluate it as we go on into the next two quarters and take a call over uh, maybe at the end of this financial year or uh, around that time. Yes. So lastly, uh, Kundu sir, you know, how are we seeing things on ground? You know, uh, We are hearing that you know uh, the, the numbers have been relatively slower in the month of October. Your thoughts are on, especially on the vehicle finance side? No, no, October has been one of the biggest month in the history for Chola as of now and for the industry also that matter. Uh, the passenger car uh, picked up, two-wheeler, three-wheeler picked up. You know, tractor has also gone up. So, and commercial vehicle has been growing, you know, rapid speed. So, October we have deserved uh, highest so far. Uh, so, market is looking better. Yeah, there are some pockets in the market where there are some issues are there related to mining or uh, construction, but uh, at overall level, things are looking better. But in a, a specific market, there are some problems there. But uh, that we need to consider that as a part and parcel of the business. Great, great. Thanks. Thanks for this and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would request all the participants to limit their questions to one per participant. 
Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shweta Daptardar from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. You just made a fleeting mention of management overlay being held up uh, almost, uh, you know, with marginal increase quarter on quarter. So uh, against that backdrop, even if I look at ECL coverage, that is also seen to be normalizing. Like we saw 1.59 percentage vis-a-vis 1.58, you know, in March 20 quarter. So, uh, so do we uh, 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 do we see now declining trends in terms of coverage and credit cost? going forward, uh, uh, you know, factoring in the words just behind. I also remember last quarter you mentioning not much of stress on the restructured pool side. That stands meager. So what's, uh, so can you uh, throw some color there? Yeah, uh, see, you, uh, as you could see that our NPA numbers, even in absolute terms, as well as the percentage terms, are coming down, uh, both in stage two and stage three. And uh, uh, if you go pre-COVID, if you remove the management only and look at a pre-COVID, our average provision requirement, our provision coverage is in the range of around 32, 33%. That's what is expected. From, uh, so uh, okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, so we will, while we may not go down to all that level, at least uh, 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 from the perspective of what we are seeing today, we will certainly not be increasing the management overlay because certainly we don't see that uh, requirement coming up. However, regulations are keeping on changing. Market is very dynamic, so we will want we want to wait for the next one or two quarters before taking a call on how to uh, utilize this management overlay uh, in the coming quarters. Okay, so just a related question. Uh, you also mentioned that uh, uh, you know your stage two is declining. So, so that is also rightly reflected in stage two B, which is also declining. So, any vulnerability left there, uh, you know, both on stage one B and stage two B, uh, in terms of repayments and uh, uh, you know one or two EMIs or more EMIs coming through now. The stage 2B and stage 1B are a representation of what the new RBI norms is wanting us to do with regard to, I mean, declaring them as part of NPA and the direct norms. From an easier perspective, we are showing them as separate categories because they are already showing trends of improvement. They had touched NPA sometime in the past. And there has been collections of their, their outstanding which have made them move into stage 2B and stage 1B, which means they are progressively moving towards becoming a zero delinquent poker. But till that time they become zero, we need to categorize them in these two categories, and that's what is being presented. So the overall NPA number is stage 1B, 2B, and stage 3 put together is what we will be declaring to RBI. And actually, that we have, we have early adopted this as against many others in the industry who are yet to adopt this, which becomes effective from 1st October. So this is a good trend only uh, if the 2Bs and 1Bs are, uh, you know, uh, uh, coming down, and that, that means they are moving out and becoming standard. Sure, that was pretty helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Subhanshu Mishra from Philip Capital, please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so the first question is around uh, the employees. We have increased almost, uh, uh, you know, uh, 12,000 odd employees over the last uh, two odd years. Uh, just wanted to understand where they are deployed, uh, how many into the new businesses and how many into collections, sales, so on and so forth. And uh, also, if you can give you, uh, uh, give the collection architecture, how many on-roll employees are deployed into collections across verticals, if you can split that out. And if we have any uh, collection agencies also doing by collections. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Raja, I think this is too much of detail that we generally would not want to share. Broadly, I'll give you uh, almost like one-third of our you know, total population working for us is on on road, and two thirds would be off road. And uh, I would say that I, again, uh, half of that would be in collection, and half of it would be in the rest of the other activities at a very broad level. In, and uh, your uh, question on collection agencies, we don't engage collection agencies. We do use some of them 
coordinate with uh, RTO offices or the police, etc., for uh, you know, and the parking yards, etc. But uh, most of our collections are done by our in-house team. Understood, sir. So, given the fact that you didn't really answer my entire question, if I can just ask one last question. What is our yeah. active number of customers? We have given the total customer pool, but how many do we bank on a monthly basis? 21 lakh customers are active uh, at, at, across all businesses. Right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congrats on the quarter. Uh, before I get to my question, just a clarification on slide 14. Um, in the pie chart for home loans, what is the 10% AL? What does AL mean? Affordable. Affordable lab. It, Affordable it is, lab. A, is a variant of uh, uh, of the home loan where, where we, we give, this is more like a lab loan given to customer profiles which fit the home loan profile. Uh, which is like a very small business guy who is taking a loan against an existing property. So since the home loan team addresses this segment of customers, we have grouped it under that. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Uh, and just uh, getting to my initial question, uh, uh, sort of overlapping with the previous guy, in the last two quarters we've added 5,000 employees but no proportionate increase in branch count. That's been largely stable. So uh, just wanted to get a sense of, uh, you know, uh, so are we you know, adding more manpower to the same branches uh, and also in the future do we expect more branch openings in the next few quarters or... This is where it sort of stabilizes. Because your peers are also around 12, 1300 branches. So is that the saturation point in vehicle finance, uh, so to speak? So these uh, overall count has gone up because we are adding manpower in the uh, new businesses. And new businesses are all co located in the uh, vehicle finance branches. And that's the reason vehicle finance branch count is actually not going up. And therefore, you are, there is a difference between what you are seeing. Otherwise, uh, uh, the headcount has gone up because of the mainly because of the new businesses. Now, in addition to that, we have also opened up around uh, 500 resident location, which has, doesn't have as of now the you know physical branch, and which will be getting converted in the branch as and when they start hitting the target volume. So that is also uh, where the vehicle finance has actually increased the footprint and also increased the. Manpower. So these are the two, uh, you know, headings. One is the vehicle finance resident location, and second is the new businesses which are expanded into the vehicle finance branches. Of course, these are mini branches, resident location. Yeah, um, okay. satellite branch, you can say. But it's not a physical branch. It is a, it is a person being operated from a certain location to assess the market and look at a few. Uh, uh, you know, agreement being captured, then once we are confident about that location, then we open a branch. Okay, thank you. I'll get back in the queue. Uh, and all the best. Thank you. A reminder to the participants to limit their question to one per participant. We have the next question from the line of Pranuj Shah from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so growth has been very strong and second half is uh, likely to be even better as uh, Mr. Kundu already highlighted. Uh, so my question was, how are you looking to fund this growth? Uh, will you be looking to move away from bank term loans and rising rates? And related also at what level of tier one would you look to raise additional capital? Thank you. Uh, we we are we, we will continue to be dependent on banks for funding to a large extent. Uh, if you look at it, uh, we we need a AAA rating to become you know more dependent on market borrowings. Uh, and as long as we are a AA plus, we will continue to be dependent on banks. Banks uh, have a very large appetite for priority sector assets. Most of our businesses uh, which we do, uh, whether it is vehicle finance, lab, Israel, etc., that is for the priority sector conditions. So we do a lot of securitization of assets under the priority sector angle. Uh, 
so we also uh, you know depending on market situations we raise the ecbs we have done in q1 uh, we have some of the ecbs and we keep looking out for such you know opportunities there is no dearth of funding from banks on this and we don't see a challenge in this uh, and but we will keep evaluating this as we move forward to look at new avenues of uh, funding and with regard to the capital uh, we are very clear that until and unless we come to less than 13% we won't be seeking uh, capital right now we are on, on the tier 1 uh, the tier 1 we are comfortable at around 15% plus so we will not be seeking capital immediately and we if uh, our growth takes us down to the 13% level then we will certainly request that understood that's very clear thank you sir i'll get back in the queue Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Shripal Doshi from Equilis Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. So, I wanted to understand how would the cost of fund move from here and, and what are the uh, changes that you are looking on the liability mix side? Because if I look at your uh, debentures share has increased from 12, 10% of like five quarters back to almost 18%. So, what is the thought process about for going for debenture, uh, you know, uh, in, in increase in debenture share in the liability uh, mix? Yeah, see, the cost of funds, again, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, we are looking at the cost of funds moving uh, almost like 50, 60 basis points as compared to the full year uh, of last year. So I still hold to that unless something more drastically happens. We have a new MPC meeting tomorrow, so I don't know what shocks or surprises that are going to get thrown out of that. But uh, as of now, our expectation is that it should not be more than 56 years once compared to last year. So we will try and keep it at that level. Uh, with regard to debentures, as uh, you would be aware, that there is a heavy norm that 25% uh, of uh, incremental borrowings needs to come through market borrowing. So we consciously are cap capitalizing on whatever, uh, you know, whenever there is a rate benefit out in the market to, to try and do debentures. So we, uh, we need to fulfill that requirement. So consciously we are increasing that. Uh, so each has got its own positive negatives, but at the current level and or at the current stage, um, you know, going into uh, 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 any new change in the approach of the mix, uh, uh, we are not looking at any great change in that. For it. The second question was with respect to the pricing side. So uh, on the uh, on, on the uh, on the non. Uh, new business uh, on the non-vehicle finance book. How frequently does the loan book get repriced? So I understand that you highlighted that you have been increasing rates in LAP and SME segment, uh, and also in the HL segment. Uh, but how, uh, like, how does it get reflected in the customer's account? Does it get repriced once in a year, or as and when it gets, uh, as and when you increase the rate, it directly gets reflected in the loan account? Yeah, yeah, as and when it gets uh, increased, it will automatically result in uh, the, uh, the tenor increase or EMI increase, depending on how the customer would prefer it. Got it, sir. So just one last question on the vehicle finance side. So on the growth for that segment, how do you see that in the second half? Like, I understand you highlighted that the growth would be 22 to 23 percent. But if this segment also delivers a healthy growth, uh, how, how do you, what sort of range would you give in that case? Actually, if you see that the first half number for the com commercial vehicle has been 453,000. And uh, in the past, uh, during 1819, we saw industry delivered almost 1 million uh, vehicles sold. So we have a, actually, uh, you know, uh, we have a uh, cushion to basically grow. And uh, whatever number we have uh, seen industry delivered, we can double the number in this second half. The second half is always higher than the first half in the history also. And Ravi is actually expected to do better than Kharif because the first half was uh, slightly uneven rate, but the second half there will not be any problem. Mining and construction act activity also going to improve. So put together commercial vehicle sales will significantly better. That is what the manufacturers are talking about. Passenger car is still uh, selling very high and there is a huge demand actually. The waiting uh, period is at, uh, from OEM to OEM is varying from say three months to six months to one year. 
three wheeler, two wheeler also likely to go up. So put together, we are expecting that uh, the industry growth of all the vehicle and pattern and construction equipment put together, which is uh, as of now at 31 percent, can be maintained at this level or slightly go up to 35 percent. Now this is the unit number growth. Now if you convert into the value growth, the ticket size has gone up because the prices have gone up from BS4 to BS6. To that extent, uh, the value growth will be higher. And for us, uh, we have uh, we can actually either maintain the market share or, or, or can look for improving the market share, which will be also a trigger point for higher, having a higher growth. So that is what is the number uh, in, in terms of vehicle finance. We are actually in line with that, and we are expecting that we will be better than industry in terms of uh, uh, both unit and value. Alright, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for answering my questions, and good luck for the next quarter. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ankit Patel from l and Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations on a good quarter. Um, my, question was around, um, yeah, my question was around the asset quality and uh, the classification you earlier mentioned uh, on the GS3 and the GNPA numbers. Now, once the RBI circular came in, uh, uh, la uh, end of last calendar year, I think the first quarter that you released, uh, the difference between the two numbers was about 270 bips, and uh, now that has come down to 200 bips. Uh, just wanted to understand, uh, so it's been almost a year, and uh, operationally, obviously, you would be trying to put in place, um, op you know, your systems to try and see that these two numbers come closer uh, and earlier we were seeing that a trajectory could be more faster uh, than this. Uh, what are your thoughts around how this, uh, you, you know, could be moving in the future? Um, and and do you see any real uh, challenges in actually trying to bring this down? See, uh, the customer profile that we handle, this variance will be there. The customers whom we handle cannot move back from stage three to zero delinquency instantaneously. There will always be a time lag between them because they cannot afford to pay two or three installments in one go. So to that extent, whenever there, are, there is a movement of a customer to stage three and then progressively he moves back, it will take a few you know, months or quarters to get over and come to the zero delinquency level. The large chunk which we saw was on account of the stage 3 movement in Q1 last year, which had a larger impact. And as we keep moving out that stage 3 book and, you know, resolving them, we will see a good amount of traction in the reduction in the variance between the GNPA as per RBA and the stage 3 as per what the ECL model suggests. So to that extent, you will we'll see some more reduction, but I don't think the... The variance between these two numbers can be completely eliminated. Just to add, uh, you see, 1B and 2B, which is basically has the you know, stage 3 at some point in time, they have come back to lower bucket. Okay. So for such customer, we cannot do anything other than just guiding them or educating them that you are considered as MPA. But till 30th September, as per RBI and as per Bureau, they were not considered. From 1st of October, if it is applicable, then Bureau also will start flagging them as uh, NPA. And if that is happening, that happened, then only there will be some pressure on the customer. Otherwise, customer will say that, you know, I was actually 90 DPT has come down. So we cannot put any undue pressure on the customer. We can only just go and say that, you know, kindly come out of the, the flagging of 2B and 1B because you have touched a 90 plus at some point in time. And during the previous period, there were a lot of good customers went up, and we have to give them adequate time. Maybe after one year, when things are actually better, obviously every customer who is actually has come down from say 90 plus to 60 and 30, obviously he will he would like he or she will would like to definitely go down to zero telling zero level up telling Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Reminder to all the participants. To limit the question to only one per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. We have the next question from the line of Ashwani Kumar Agarwala from Edelweiss Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. So, if we look at your uh, 
spreads for last uh, three, four years, the spread started increasing uh, post Q2 FY21 when we had ample of liquidity in the system. Now, uh, interest rate is being normalized, liquidity is being sucked out again. So, uh, do we see the NIMS on AUM uh, going back to six, six and a half trajectory on a steady state basis? See, uh, the, the NIM improvement, when cost of funds comes down, there is also a pass through to on, on the yield. So, to that extent, that this thing happens, and when again the cost of funds moves up, we will again progressively increase yields. We spoke about it a few minutes back at the same call. So, such cycle happens, but there will be certain amount of time lag between these two happening. So, to that extent, you will see some drop in them over the uh, next few one or two quarters, and then as the book changes uh, with regard to the marginal yield catching up with on the fixed rate book, and uh, with regard to the change in rate on the floating rate book, then we will catch up. So we will certainly not let go of the uh, NIM aspect of a, of a certain product. Again, as I said earlier, based on product mix, the NIM will change. For example, if we focus more on two-wheeler, the NIM may look very attractive because the yield is high, but then the OPEX will be high because of the small ticket loan. And to some extent, the NCN will be high. So, I mean, uh, my request is when we have such a wide product range with differing yield levels, the focus is better to be on the rota rather than, you know, the individual line items of NIM, yield, NIM, OPEX, etc. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Abhijit Tibriwal from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Um, good morning and, and congratulations on our healthy quarter. Sir, uh, my question is for, for Tavi, sir. Sir, I understand you might have covered it uh, briefly while answering to the first participant. Uh, my line had dropped off, so in case it's a repetition, please let me know. Um, so just trying to understand, I mean, the competitive landscape that is there today, uh, is it allowing you to take uh, uh, increase in yields on your incremental lending or is there uh, a reason to kind of watch out this space in terms of how the competitive landscape evolves and what kind of uh, yield increases we will be able to take uh, on the incremental lending in vehicle finance? See, we have been successful in increasing the yield of the marginal book. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, we are deeply rooted and uh, small, small branches here to clear three down, that competition is not there. Uh, and, uh, you know, if the numbers have started growing further in uh, in this year to clear three down, which is uh, the reflection of the improvement in rule demand, obviously we have been positioned to sustain our uh, growth in terms of marginal book yield. And it has been so far as of now. But if... Uh, it is also depending on the product mix. If the heavy commercial vehicle or light commercial vehicle growing faster as compared to small commercial vehicle or tractor, then we need to maintain the market share in each and every product line. Suppose if heavy commercial is growing faster and we maintain our market share, then it also starts you know, impacting on scale. So this is depending on uh, the geography, product, and the mix of the product. Till now, we have been successful, and we are expecting that we will continue to do so at least for this financial year. This is useful, sir. And my last question is for Arun, sir. Sir, while we understand that RBI has very clearly said uh, that uh, under the new RBI circular, uh, IRAC norms and India's guidelines will be very, very different. Uh, given that the implementation date of the circular was October 1st, uh, and given that uh, now those loans will have to be tagged as GNP, which they were not required to be done uh, until, let's say, 30th September. Uh, under India's, uh, just clarifying, under India's, will there be any change in accounting norms in terms of recognition of interest income or the way you do provisioning? No, the India's works on a loss given default and the probability of default system. These are these are done based on the past, you know, history or past experience of each product line or the sub product line that we we do. So we have to take the loss given default of each of the sub product and that's how we calculate what is the LGD if a product touches ninety. 
Now, if we can, I, we can also take the, the same approach we have taken when we did the 1B, 2B also. When the product has 90 and moved back to 60 or anywhere between 30 to 60, how has been the LGD? And that's how we have already calculated and put the differential provisioning under ACL also for that 1B and 2B. Now, there is differing views in the industry on how to treat this, uh, you know, should we align stage 3 to cross NPI itself uh, as per RBI is a view that the industry will and then the auditors and, you know, the other participants in the industry and maybe the regulator themselves may come up with because prior to these guidelines, the view of RBI has been to sort of align stage 3 and NPA as per the old norms. But here they have categorically mentioned that this, it need not be aligned. However, again, the regulator can take a stance differently. So we are keeping our, you know, options open with regard to how to account this. But right now, if you look at pure NDAs, the way we have accounted is what it needs to be done. Understood, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, that's all from my side and wish you and your team the very best. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Umang Shah from Kotak Mahindra AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question and congratulations to the team on a good quarter. Um, just one question on the asset quality front. Now, it might be a little early to call out on the asset quality performance of the of the new portfolio, but based on your initial experience, um, how should we look at uh, uh, the steady state credit cost going forward, uh, give, given the fact that the share of new businesses will, will only increase uh, in the overall uh, asset base? So uh, uh, will our asset co or, or the credit co steady state credit cost experience be materially different from what we have seen in the past? Uh, just wanted to understand that. Okay, what we need to look at is each business we need to look at the credit cost in line with that business. So this is exactly why I said even in an earlier context with regard to the yield and the NIMPAR that the, each business will have a different yield and it will have a different offense and different credit cards. Now the new businesses will certainly turn out a much, much larger yield as compared to the traditional businesses. But their offense will be more and their credit cards will be higher. So the ultimate game is to get a rota which is palatable to all stakeholders. That is what we will endeavor to, and that is that is the whole point of having a diversified mix of products. So we are not getting impacted by one factor on the p and line. So we will work towards that. So if you look at it as an independent line item, credit cost may go up as we move up the slightly higher risk book. But our rota will be better because these are actually rota accretive to the existing businesses, the new businesses. And again, as Kundu was saying earlier, we are not going to scale up these businesses like how we have always been doing. In any new product, we will be testing the market, experiencing the product, and then scaling them up as we go and get comfortable <coughs> product by product, customer by customer, geography by geography. That's how we will scale up this business. And as we scale up, we will make sure that they give us the rota that we endeavor to reach. Perfect. Thanks for that. And just one data point. What were the write-offs for the quarter? Uh, write-offs. One minute. I can try and take it out. Um, so write-offs have been in the range of around 80 or close. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Th thank you so much. Those were my questions. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Pranav from Rare Enterprises. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I just have two questions. Uh, uh, one is that I understand that your LGD uh, is much lesser in vehicle business, but uh, uh, why not just provide for whatever is uh, due after a certain day in that business also and take PCR to say 60 to 70%. That is first. Also, second question is that what kind of precautions or questions the board is asking management uh, where uh, the new lines of business have been growing very fast and why not let them have some maturity and then take a call before scaling it up uh, to a big level. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. And congrats for the good set of numbers. 
see uh, with regard to the first question uh, it's not you know uh, unlike the earlier period under india the way we need to provide is much more uh, you know determined by past experience and we don't have that much independence to simply say that i will add up more provision or i will provide less uh, it it is based on your book performance in the past so we need to stick to that actually covid related uh, uh, you know period we have kept this management overly outside this and that is how we are carrying this extra provision and even now uh, you know right from audit committee etc there have been you know questions on how we need to uh, fall in line with india as we uh, take out to the management overlay by itself which we will work on i, I think I, i spoke about it in the early part of this conversation no on the second question i think the conversation of the board with us i think that's private private to us i would not want to <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, i meant to say yeah. that what kind of precautions you are taking uh, so a uh, uh, prudent way would be just to originate some book and then let it mature over to one one or one and a half years and then scale it up because whatever said and done we are in line with whatever is the direction of the board and uh, the senior management we take this and uh, yeah so just to add here uh, the way we are expanding if you see that we have given given the branch of the branches to reach in every business in the vehicle finance we have 1100 branches so as of now in the uh, cell business we are now operational in the uh, less than one third of the branches in the home loan also first we have done a south zone for last three seven years and now only we started you know expanding into east west north and within the east west north also we identified which are the state which are the customer segment what are the type of property so it is not that we are just expanding we are you know going by geography going by the customer segment going by the product offering and once we are uh, tested in a particular uh, bigger town then we go to smaller town so all three new businesses like you know cfl cpl and sme the the growth in terms of volumes are uh, looking high because the industry size itself is very big for example cfl industry our market share as of now is 0.5 percent because that industry is very large and if you want to do it in say one third of the branches also this volume will come uh, and if if we, if we are going to in a town and if you are not uh, addressing all the uh, you know if you are going in a traditional way and if you are not attending all the dsa then you will be negligible player in the town so wherever whichever town we are going we are trying to basically reach out to all the lead source lead sources for taking that low and in terms of the quality uh, so like for example if you sell their uh, uh, bounce rate is significantly lower than the industry has done although it is yet to be uh, matured in terms of the portfolio size and book but we are far ahead in terms of quality so both quality and type of customer and in terms of growth we are very, very cautious and we are moving very slow Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question that the management could answer today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nishchin Sabati for closing comments. Uh thank you everyone for joining uh us today. Uh we thank the management for providing us an opportunity to host this call. Thank you very much. Nishchin? Yeah. Nishchin? Arun here. Yeah. Nishchin? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Velan wanted to speak on hey, something. Hey, it's okay. Uh, I think Arul, it's okay. Now, now we, now we can talk. Now, now we can speak. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye. On behalf of Kotak Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect.